I would like to introduce Dr. Peter Cash, a biotech VC for over 30 years, creating over $10 billion in market cap with several FDA approved drugs, mainly in cancer. He's been a professor of entrepreneurship at the Wharton School of Business, Nihon University in Tokyo, and Hebrew U University of Jerusalem. He's traveled and lectured in over 60 countries and just made his 60th visit to Israel. Thank you. Wow, how's everybody doing? By the way, I was supposed to speak at 10 o'clock this morning, left my house at 5.20 to get to the George Washington Bridge before 6 so I'd make it here in time, and now I'm speaking at 1 p.m., but it's all good. <laughs> so, I was asked to give a talk about uh, investing in Israel. My, my main background is for 30 plus years, I invest in uh, unique molecules and compounds, uh, mainly for cancer. Uh, and uh, it's, it's the single greatest job in the world. It's better than being Michael Jordan in the morning. And um, I've done a lot of work and a lot of financing in Israel. And I just want to show, I'm going to talk for 20 minutes, not more than that, and share with you why Israel is such a unique place to be investing, whether you already have or if you might contemplate it. And as Sharon mentioned, I just did my 60th visit to Israel, which was an incredible experience. Um, I was actually supposed to be there uh, with this guy uh, last uh, Thursday night. Jack Ma has become the biggest advocate uh, of Israel. Uh, he's putting in significant capital into Israel. And just to look what he said, he, he just said this uh, last Thursday, uh, is that Israel has uh, innovation. It has chutzpah, which is today an American lexicon word of courage. In Israel, innovation is everywhere. It's like water and food, and it's so natural. Two years ago, in August, I was in Israel, and the week that I was there, there were 300 Chinese uh, business people the week that I was in Israel. And what's fascinating about the connection of Israel and Israel, besides a lot of Jewish people eating at Chinese restaurants during Christmas, uh, which is true, is that if you go back 1,100 years ago, 1,200 years ago, there were tens of thousands of Jews, ancient Hebrews, living in Israel, that, in, in China, that very few people know about. There were so many Hebrews living in China that the Ming Emperor at the time took all their Hebraic names, uh, Ben Abraham, Ben Sion, and changed their names to seven Chinese surnames. So if you do any mathematical algorithm, there are millions of Chinese today, millions, that heritage was once from ancient Israel. And that's why I believe that there's a unique uh, connection between China and Israel today beyond just business, but that's, that's for another story. Um, beside, before Jack Ma, uh, uh, probably the most sophisticated investor uh, in the world, uh, Warren Buffett, uh, believed in the Israeli economy. And what's unique is, in Israel's the most promising investing hub outside of the United States in 2006, now, the uniqueness of this, I was actually there when he was there uh, uh, for my son's bar mitzvah. And what's interesting is that a war was occurring, and he just put in $4.2 billion, <laughs> the largest investment at the time in an Israeli company. And someone asked Warren Buffett, do you regret making this investment? He goes, I'm putting more in. There is no better time to be investing because of the innovation of, of the Israelis. And in fact, he did. Um, as you can see, back in 2013, he put in an additional $2 uh, billion and bought Iskar, which is in the northern part of Israel, where actually I lived uh, for three years. Uh, which was a, an incredible experience. Now, just look at this. Israel is 10 million people. It has a higher GDP this year than Japan per capita. Now, in 1967, when the main export of Israel was a Yaffa orange, and you look at what they're doing today, it's absolutely incredible. It, it's nothing short of a miracle in a lot of respects. Uh, this is 2017 data of where Israel stands in, in, in the world of uh, economics and, and, and econ economy. Um, allow me to share the next slide. These are some of the top Israeli exits. Just, I'm just going to cover a couple. Uh, last year, Mobileye was bought by Intel for $15.3 billion. 
A lot of you don't realize this, but Viber that we all used to use, except when we got disconnected when somebody else called us, it got sold for $900 million. Uh, Waze, which everyone in this room probably used once this week, uh, was bought for $1.3 billion by Google. Uh, one of my favorites, actually, is something that no one ever heard of, is Futuram. It's a fragrance uh, company, and it was bought by International Flavors and Fragrances for $7 billion this year. This is what's going on in Israel on a, on a weekly basis. There are hundreds of exits happening and merges. And what's very interesting is, is uh, I was at a, a meeting uh, with Chemi Perez, uh, Shimon Perez's uh, son. He runs the largest uh, fund in Israel called Patango. He said with all these Israeli companies exiting, it's bad for Israel because they're selling it to the Chinese, to the Koreans, to the United States. And he said, no, actually it's the opposite. He said, when you get one company sold and now you have a hundred people that all become millionaires or the like, they create their own companies. And now you have not one startup, but now you have a multitude of startups. And I didn't agree at first, but it makes sense. So that's why there's a constant flow of entrepreneurship uh, happening in Israel. And it has to do with the ingenuity of, of the people because they have no choice. Um, this is just a 2017 Israeli startup scene right now. Look at this. 23 billion in 112 acquisitions. They couldn't get to the 13th for the bar mitzvah, but what are you going to do? Um, uh, uh, there were 620 deals uh, that raised uh, 5.2 billion. Listen to this statistic. 94 NASDAQ listed companies from Israel. That's more than any other country except for the United States and China a country of 10 million people. And you could just see some of the major areas that are interesting today. Computers, medical devices, biotech, fintech. There was a company bought last week, uh, a cybersecurity company, for $250 million by Tamasak in uh, Singapore. It's a group that I used to go visit back in the late 1980s. Uh, General uh, Alexander Haig uh, was on my board of directors for 20 years. So I used to get to travel with him. It was quite a unique experience traveling with General Haig, as you could Im well imagine. But you could look at nanotechnology, clean technology. Israel's one of the fastest growing countries now for being vegetarian. And th there's a lot of reasons for that. Because even look in the Bible, uh, from the time of Adam and Eve to the time of Noah, everybody in the Bible was a vegetarian. And then at the time of Noah, they started eating meat. Now, I'm not making any uh, uh, causality, but from the time of Adam and Eve to Noah, everybody lived between 300 years to 900 years of age. Obviously, it's not true. They started eating meat and kaput. Mm. Just saying. I just want to share where Israel has become. Israel, Israel in terms of VC per capita, uh, and as a percentage of, G, of GDP, Israel invests more in R&D than any country in the world including the United States, on a, on a, on a per capita ba basis. It's number one in, in terms of pure startups. One startup for every 400 people. You know, it's, like, it's, it's a funny story when uh, 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 Lyndon Johnson met with Levi Eshkol. This is a true story, by the way. And uh, they were trying to do an arms deal. And uh, 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 President Johnson said something to Levi Eshkol along the lines of, uh, uh, you know, I have to go home and I have to speak to 200 million citizens and convince them. Because that you think that's what I have to go back and to speak to three million prime ministers. Uh, uh, so, uh, you, you look at Israel. The, the innovation is just is just endless of what's going on. I was a professor, a visiting professor at Hebrew University, uh, four years ago. I had 110. Uh, engineering students and computer science and mathematical students, obviously much brighter than myself. But what was unique was uh, none of them ever took a course in entrepreneurship. And I found that fascinating in Israel that at Hebrew University there was no class ever. Uh, two weeks ago, the president of Hebrew University announced that every single student, no matter their major, will have to take a class in entrepreneurship now. Uh, so it's, it's, if you thought that it, it, it's, it's ended, it, it's just beginning. It's, it's just beginning. So these are just what's happening in Israel now. Just look at the amount of companies. If you go to Herzliya, which is about 20 minutes, 25 minutes north of, uh, of Tel Aviv, you pass the great restaurant Turkey's uh, right on the water, which I recommend to everybody. And uh, you get to Herzliya, and you have all these companies there. 
uh, from IBM to Microsoft to Google to Facebook. Uh, uh, IBM, I believe, develops more patents from Israel than any other country outside the United States, from little Israel. Intel just put in another additional $5 billion in a research center. Uh, you all want to be part of it. You all want to be part of that. You know, it, it's a, it, it, to show you the ingenuity of Israelis, uh, it, 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 back in 1967, after the 67 war, uh, 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 President Johnson calls up Levi Eshkol, and he goes to him, we can't believe that, you know, you just defeated 11 countries in six days. We're still trying to get out of Vietnam. We made a decision in Congress. We want to ex uh, exchange three generals from Israel for three generals of ours. Call me in a week and we'll exchange him. A week later, he calls up Levi Eshkol, who doesn't know what to do, and uh, President Johnson said, we want uh, that guy, uh, 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 the first general, Eric Sharon. We want to have him to come over here. And he goes, the, the next, guy, next general is we want General Ezra Weitzman of, of, of the Air Force. And we want that other guy, uh, General Rabin. And he said, fine. And he said, so, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, what three generals do you want from America? He said, General Electric, General Motors, and General Dynamics. <laughs> this is ingenuity. <laughs> By the way, that was just a joke. <laughs> um, this is the company that I just told you was bought last week. Just last week. And what's very unique is there's a, a unit in Israel called uh, 8200. Um, it's where uh, they think out of the box. And um, many of these people go on to form, you got to remember this, these are 18 to 21 year old boys and girls. In fact, there's a unit in Israel made up of children that are autistic. What country takes autistic children and makes them soldiers. I, I'm not making this up. These are autistic children that have certain unique mathematical abilities and they utilize them. Every single citizen is used in a very unique way. And from 21, when my children are deciding which fraternity and which sorority they're going into, here in Israel, they decide which unit is gonna propel them to the next step of life. And they're handling multi-hundred million dollars of equipment and they come on to become great uh, business leaders. I only have a couple more slides and open it up for like one or two questions. Bill Gates, uh, the innovation of going uh, in Israel is critical to the future of all technological business. Listen to this. There are 307 foreign, not domestic, foreign research centers now in Israel. Each and every one of you, whatever company you might have, needs to have some type of hub within Israel in some type of capacity. Another reason, Israel recycles 90% of its wastewater, four times more than any country in the world. You want to talk about being green? Now, it's very interesting. I always like playing with numbers. Uh, H2O, hydrogen has a molecular weight of one, an atomic weight of one. Oxygen has an atomic weight of 16. So H2O is high, or 18 for life. How many of you knew that one? Come on. All right. Thank you. Uh, one. One, because I told you a couple of weeks ago. Two. Okay, there, there we go. <laughs> it, it, it's really interesting to look, but water, water is the primary uh, aspect of, of life over there. This next slide is even more interesting for me. 90% of homes in Israel have solar water heaters. Now, I don't understand why it's not a required law in Florida, Arizona, Southern California, New Mexico, why it is not a law that every single home has it. Since the 1970s, late 1970s, in 1978, 65% of the homes in Israel had solar energy. Today it's 90%. Uh, we all have to be thinking in economic green, and that's what they do. I have a couple more slides. If you want to learn about Israel, these are the only two books you have to read. There's no other books you have to read, including my own. I have three bestsellers in Israel. All the money goes to charity. 100% of it goes to charity. It goes to an organization called Natal. Uh, which is Yehudit Rekhanati's charity for psychological damage from victims of terrorism. Uh, Arab, Israeli, Christian Jews, anybody who's a victim, it's, uh, it's across the board. But these are two books that I highly recommend. And uh, Leon Uris sold a few more books than me. He sold 125 million books. And we try to brag about being a bestseller <laughs> compared to that. Um, and Startup Nation is, is a must if you want to understand Israel. And that's me in the bottom uh, when I was serving uh, 33 years ago. This picture was taken 33 years ago. I was in slightly better shape. 
But I want to share something with you. I, I, I didn't speak a word of Hebrew when I moved to Israel, not one word, except for Peter, which is my name. Um, uh, and uh, within three years, I ended up relatively speaking it pretty good. I came from nowhere. I came from Brooklyn, grew up in Long Island, went to SUNY Binghamton, and here I am giving advice, uh, real advice, uh, to two prime ministers uh, that had a huge effect on me. And th that is the beauty of America. I mean, the greatness of America is, uh, we're made up of chutzpah also. There is, the greatest export of America is our way of life. Uh, there's never been a country that's been more benevolent than America. With, with all the bullshit that occurs on the political spectrum, there's no country more benevolent than, than America. And um, that has transpired to other countries. And uh, to Israel, and I actually think even China, we're talking about the Sino-American uh, uh, conflict. Uh, under the surface, I go to China a lot, uh, they love the American way of life. Just ask all of them who go to Wharton and Harvard and MIT. Um, it, it, there's a unique connection that goes over, over, over everything. Um, I think I have one more slide. Uh, these are my three books. Uh, the one in the middle actually hit number one in Israel for three months, which was a big deal for my mother. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I, I used to get thrown out of Hebrew school a lot, so you know, for her it was a, it was, it was a, it was a big deal. But um, I'll stop here, I'll open it up for just a couple of questions and why not, and uh, just share, sh share with you, even if not for business, it's worth going to Israel if you've never been there uh, once. In fact, I'm always jealous of people who go there for the first time, because you only get to go there for the first time once. So going there 60 times is nice, but going there for the first time is even better. But uh, I'll open up for a couple of questions if they're easy. Go ahead. Thank you. Right. And the last one was just a few months ago. And everything you say is just black. I love Israel. But I wanted to ask you, I missed who you are. I'm nobody. <laughs> uh, um, oh, you missed the introduction. They gave an introduction. My, my name is Peter Cash. And my mother thinks I'm a really good guy. My wife, eh. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a biotech venture capitalist for 30 years and do a lot around the world, in Israel, Europe, China, and uh, I have a lot of fun. I'll I am a colleague, so a media company there, the Da Vinci, oh, I and a colleague of mine sold a, the Da Vinci exhibit to a media company there about six years ago. And... Uh, they, we had a five-year payout. They paid the first two, to, oh, pardon me, it was, it was to China. I beg your pardon. Right, China, Israel, same thing. I've been to, <laughs> I got confused. I've been to both ways. Okay. Anyway, we, we wanted to sell Israel the Da Vinci exhibit. Right. Did not do it. Right. And I want to get some sculptures into Yad Vashem. Right. So if you can help, I'd appreciate it. I'll speak afterwards. You know, what's interesting is that China, the Chinese government, Four and a half years ago, bought the largest dairy company in Israel, Tanuva. And, um, you know, in Israel, some people were worried, just like when Japan bought the, um, uh, the building here by Rockefeller Center, they said, the Japanese are buying up America. Where are they taking the building? I mean, then, then, you know, where are they taking the cows? The cows are staying there. There's nothing. You know, it, it, we're becoming a uniquely symbiotic uh, uh, um, uh, planet. And the quicker we learn to work with one another, especially the major countries like China and America, uh, it's going to be much better off for our children and grandchildren the quicker we get there. And we're going to get there. It's, it's, we're going through a stage. We're going through adolescence as a species. You know? it's, it's like, a, it's like a, this is a true story. Gold in my ear after the Yom Kippur War, uh, and if you heard it, I apologize, but this is a true story. Henry Kissinger, who was Henry Kissinger, who's still alive, by the way, he's 95. I got a chance to, to, to meet him once, and uh, uh, after the Yom Kippur War, he went to fly to Israel, and uh, he wants to set the stage. So he says to Golda Meir, before we begin, uh, Madam Prime Minister, I want to let you know, first I'm an American, then I'm Secretary of State, and then I'm a Jew. And she goes, this is very good. From here, we read from uh, right to left. <laughs> <laughs> True story. But... Um, uh, it, it, it's really, 
an embryonic story, Israel, and uh, I urge all of you to take one visit there once, and you're going to want to go back. And it doesn't make a difference your religious denomination or where you're from. It's, it's really the cradle of a, a civilization. In fact, the largest group of people traveling that right now are people from China and people from Latin America, believe it or not. So it's really becoming a very dynamic thing. Do we have any other questions? Before One other question? Yes, sir? In Israel? It, that, that's, that's, that's the best question. He asked, what's the best way to invest in Israel? There's, there, there's a few ways of doing that. Um, and just like anywhere you invest in anywhere in the world, you only invest when there's indigenous investors from that country. Like, I'll never invest. I have several companies that I invest in China, <laughs> but all my partners are Chinese. <laughs> so I'm investing with the Chinese. Same thing in Israel. If you're investing in Israel, you make sure that you have uh, Israeli partners uh, that know the lay of the land, the lay of the law, and why not. And just like with any other investment, it's a diversification. There are specific funds in Israel that you can invest in. There are uh, um, almost like angel family offices, whereby a group of family offices will invest in a specific technology, and they invest alongside it. And then you have uh, people here that invited me from BCD <laughs> that asked me to speak here, that they also seek small investors as well. But the most important thing is diversifying with whatever you're doing to uh, do, and invest in technology. The one thing I could share with you, Israel's the number one country now in the world for cannabis research. Okay? And it's, 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 it's smoking. You know, so, uh, uh, come on. Not all of them are going to be good. <laughs> What's that? Are the valuations high? On, on, uh, uh, he said, are the valuations high? That, that, that's actually better than mine. Two points. All right. Anything else? One other question? Yes? What are the greatest challenges uh, to, uh, I'm sorry. What are the greatest challenges to investing in Israel? Wow, the greatest challenges to invest in Israel. It, 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 it's a fair question. You know, uh, I still remember uh, going over there um, uh, right after I got married, and just getting insurance. If my company wanted to get insurance on me when I went over there. Was a difficult thing, but that was back in 1989. Uh, Today, it, the, the biggest challenge there really is um, uh, where you want to invest, meaning there are so many different technologies. Uh, do you want to invest in one vertical, uh, be it nanotechnology or cybersecurity, which is booming, or do you want to invest in a diversified uh, group of technologies? For me personally, I've, I've made money and I've lost money, but the way to limit your exposure is by investing in a diversified fund and diversified, whether it's media technology, water technology, um, um, uh, nanotechnology. I believe, in, I believe in diversification at my stage in my life anyway. It's, it's, it reduces a lot of the unsystematic risk that is inherent in any form of investing. The second thing is getting there and, and getting to meet people. But I've got to tell you, if you go to the Israeli embassy um, and speak to the economic attache, I dealt with a woman named Nili Shalev. Uh, she's not there any longer. Uh, they opened up everything to me. I, can't, I, I asked them to set up some meetings. They set up 22 meetings for me, n not just for me, but for a couple of people I was going with. It was amazing. I mean, we went there, all the CEOs met with us. They could not be, have not been more helpful. So, and, you know, if I could be of any help, you'll get my name and number. But it's amazing just what the Israeli government does now. They're so much more sophisticated than they were 20, 20 years ago. Uh, so that is another way of doing it as well. And to be honest with you, there are at least three Israeli angel conferences every month here in New York. Every, every single month. There's I Angels, there's a bunch of different conferences where Israelis that live here hold health care or this, that, and you can get to meet people there as well. Does that help a little bit? <laughs> right, fantastic. So, so with that, I'll, I'll stop here. I want to wish everybody an amazing, meaningful day. Just don't make it an amazing day, make it a meaningful day. Thank you very much.